Well, now, as we've said, that performance was the first by Adele since a throat operation in November. We're joined now from Los Angeles by Adele's throat surgeon, Dr. Stephen Zietels. Do surgeons get nervous? And were you nervous last night, uh, Dr. Zietels? I say a little bit, but it's more like uh, having a family member about to uh, perform, be it at a sports event or on a stage, because uh, you, you get a certain closeness to your patients and you're wishing them well and, sure, you're empathic to what's going on. Not wishing to, to pry into state secrets, I mean, was it a very serious problem in her throat? Uh, serious in the sense that she couldn't have continued to sing unless it was repaired. Uh, not a disease, not anything that, that's dangerous. It's a benign process. Uh, and with the surgery being done properly, uh, she should be fine for years to come. Uh, so, yes, it's serious, and that vocal bleeding is a complete sort of per contraindication to continuing to sing. Uh, but the technologies and instruments that we've developed made it a somewhat straightforward situation and a highly unique and individual person. And no danger that when you're in there, you're going to affect the timbre of her voice? Um, well, there's always a danger. I think what you're asking is, can a permanent person be individually permanently hoarse afterwards? Sure, that's a risk. I've been fortunate. I've, I've never had a, a singer worse after a procedure. But the signature of the voice is actually the shape of the nose and the mouth and the throat. And the vocal cords are sort of like a reed. It's a steady sound source. When the vocal cords are not creating a steady sound source, you hear hoarseness. And then that becomes part of your vocal signature. But any of us who has ever sung, and I've never sung like Adele, but I have sung, knows that you can go for it. She goes for it all the time. I mean, really pushing it hmm. uh, in a way that vocal cords possibly weren't even really made for. Can she go on doing that? Uh, I actually think she can. I, I would venture to guess a lot of the things that occur are the performance coupled to all the activities during the day. And we live in a society now where uh, people are doing that much more, even if they're emailing, those hundred emails result in extra phone conversations. We, we live in a time where we do a tremendous amount with our voice and it's a very frenetic type of increased pace. And then you have to perform at night. Um, you know, when I was younger and used to see shows, the shows were actually much longer then. But I don't think the pace of human communication was anything like it is today. You and I think this you, is all. You mentioned the technology. Uh, if you'd been performing this operation 23 years ago, could you have mm -hmm. had as good results? Uh, the answer is probably yes, except much more difficult to do. So um, I would say it would have taken much longer and it would have been much more technically difficult, uh, but achievable. Um, there are certain things about the technology that have just made it very, very straightforward. And in a, in a word, you, I mean, you don't, uh, you don't expect to be seeing her again at all soon. Well, just for checks. <laughs> but I, I, I think what you're asking, do I expect to be operating her again, operating on her again in the near future? And the answer is no. I think that, uh, in fact, uh, to my assessment, she sounds smoother now than, than before, and her vocal folds are in excellent condition. Dr. Zetels in Los Angeles, thank you very, very much for joining us live.